All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the body. Again, we have some symmetry here. I would suggest we start with a general base extrusion, maybe starting in the front plane and extruding towards the back, and then through a process of subtraction using cut extrude to create the channel, to create the rounded edges on the front face here, and possibly a mid-plane cut extrude to create this back feature here followed by our counterbore holes and then finally with our Acme uh, screw hole here that you can see shows the threads. We also want to keep in mind that we want to have a couple little chamfers here to facilitate the thread moving through that hole. So let's go ahead and begin. Starting with the front plane here, I'll create a new sketch. And once again, using the origin, I'll start with a vertical construction line. I'll select it and use it for dynamic mirroring. And then we'll go ahead and sketch out a basic profile here and use smart dimension to set an overall width here of 2.50 and an overall height of 2.60 now we'll take a look at using the extrude boss we'll reverse direction We'll make this a total of 6.10. Sorry. 6.10. And there we have just a basic boss extrude. Now we'll follow up with the detailed features. Selecting the front face here, I'll create a new sketch once again using the origin as our reference point here. I'll create a vertical construction line, select it, and activate the dynamic mirror. I'll use a simple line here to sketch out our central channel here. And then come back in with our smart dimensions here to establish the right dimensions. So from this edge here to the center we got 0 0.450 and then our height from this edge to here is going to be let's do actually let's do uh, the total height here of 1.250 and then now we can go ahead and set the rest of our, our heights here 0 0.450 and then we'll set from here to here at 0 0.70 okay and now we can set our widths we've got from here to the center we got 0 0.650 and then from this edge to the center 0 0.750 alright once again fully defined sketch and then we'll go ahead and use features extrude cut now here again we can just use uh, either blind or through all or if we use up to surface in the event that we have to change our length of our base uh, this feature will always adapt to the length so that would be another option here up to surface okay now there's our channel next we'll do the well we'll create the the middle body here through cut extrude and then we'll work on the front face now to open up the body here let's start with the right plane and create a sketch 
and I'll just roughly sketch a rectangular area here. Let's get normal to it, and now we can constrain it. So now I could align this edge with the top edge here, but I, I want to make sure I penetrate that surface. And then I can use Smart Dimension to set this dimension here to 1.10. And then also the dimension from the bottom here at 1.10. And then from the front face here, we're going to set that to 0.800. Now, using our extrude cut, we're going to do this as a mid plane extrusion. And again, we could just use uh, through all or some numeric dimension there. And that's how we'll reveal the middle of the body there. Now to produce the curved features of the front face here, we're going to use a few circles. So starting by selecting this face, let's create a new sketch. Again, let's use a center line from the origin vertically. And this we'll use to establish our first circle. Now it's going to be coincident with that center line there. And we'll set it to a diameter of 1.20. Next, we'll position it. from the center there to the bottom edge here at 2.0 and then now we'll place two other circles and we'll use a radius of 0.5 0.4 or 0.8 diameter. Now I'm going to set this from the bottom here at a height of 2.10 and then we'll select it to mirror it. the other side. Okay. So now that we have them there, let's go ahead and make them tangent to this circle. So let's select this circle here, control click this circle, and set it to tangent. Now we'll be able to create our outline using these edges. So let's control click these edges and use convert entities and then we'll trim the remainder. So oh, actually we, we need just a couple more edges here too. We need a straight edge here that connects with the arc. So let's just draw a line, straight line all the way across. Make it horizontal. We'll select this line and then control click one of the circles and make a tangent. Now we can clean up our line work. So I'll use trim. We're going to trim this bottom here. We're going to trim this edge here. We're going to trim this part of the circle, this outside part, this edge here. So you can see now we've got this edge, the arc, we'll go ahead and get rid of that, and then we're going to get rid of all these extra pieces here. Okay, and as you can see, we've got our top edge, the side edges here. Let's go ahead and trim off this side here. 
and now we can use our cut extrude with contours and let's make sure we use as an end condition up to surface okay again if the width there of that front face feature changes it'll be able to adapt all right next let's go ahead and produce the weep holes so once again let's select the right plane we'll create a sketch there let's get normal and we're going to use the intersection here this vertex to establish our two sketch circles for the weep holes so let's go ahead and use a circle here at this corner and I'll place another one over here and what we'll do is we'll make these equal so we'll control click both of them and use the equal relation we'll set our dimension to 0 0.0620 for the diameter and now what we'll be able to do is use our cut extrude feature we'll use mid plane and again we could just use a numeric dimension there and make sure we cut through the whole body all right there's our weep holes now we want to start taking a look at the front face and focus our attention on producing the threaded hole for the acme screw let's take a look So let's start here by selecting the right plane and creating a new sketch. Also, we want to take a look at our temporary axis. We're going to use this temporary axis here so that we can establish the center line to reference our thread profile. Let's take a look. Let's get into a normal view. And remember, we're going to be using this temporary axis here to establish the center line for uh, a reference uh, of our acne thread profile. So, beginning with center line here, we'll just go ahead and align it. And then we'll create another center line that will represent the top edge of our tooth profile and we'll use a smart dimension here to set it at 0 0.250 okay start to see that right there now the next thing that we want to do is on this face we're going to go ahead and create another center line here and I'll use this again to assist with our thread profile. We're going to create one to the side here that will represent this will represent our pitch. And we'll set that to a dimension of 0.10. There we go. Okay. So as we proceed now, we're just going to sketch out roughly what our uh, thread profile is going to look like. And to do this, again, I'm going to use this center line here together with our dynamic mirror. And we'll start off with a line. We'll start at the very top here, doing the, the crest, and then coming down to do our face and then part of our root. Now this extra piece down here that I'm creating, this is just to ensure that I'm cutting away uh, most of the material on the inside, but we'll create a, a separate hole to remove all of that material on the inside along with our chamfer hole. Okay, so so far here we've got our tooth profile and we'll go ahead and use some smart dimensions. So. For the crest here, we got 0 0.0371.
And then for our angled faces here, we're going to use Sorry, let's do this. We're going to use the thread face here and this vertical edge, and we're going to set that to 1450. Okay, and then for part of our root here, we're going to set that to 0 0.0160. And then for our total depth, we're going to set that to 0 0.060. Okay. And again, like I said, this this is just to ensure that we cut away all the material there. You don't want to make that too too large. Uh, it may start to negative negatively interact with the rest of your cut suite. So. Just double check all of your dimensions there. And let's go ahead and exit this sketch. Now that's just the tooth profile. Okay. We also have to create the helix. And like I said, we have to create the hole as well. So let's go ahead and set up the helix. And the way that we do that is once again, we'll use the front face, create a new sketch, and we'll use a sketch circle. Again, we're um, using this same center mark here and what we'll do is we'll place a circle there and we'll make it a diameter of 0 0.50 all right now next we'll select the circle and go ahead to features and we'll use our curves to produce a helix spiral. We're going to use pitch and revolution, a constant pitch. Our pitch is going to be set at 0 0.10. We're going to reverse our direction to go into the face. Uh, we don't have to do 14 revolutions, we just have to do enough to go through the face there. And here's what's important. Our start angle, we have to match it up with our profile. So we're going to start at zero degrees. And we're going to do a clockwise rotation. Click OK. And now you can see there's our helix spiral. Now before we continue with the cut suite to produce the threaded hole, Let's go ahead and make the rough hole opening. So I'll select the front face again and create a new sketch and create a circle again concentric with the previous circles here. And we'll make this of uh, dimension 0.38. And then we'll use extrude cut to surface. We'll use the back face here. So now we have our hole through. And then we can select the front edge and the back edge to create our chamfer. Now here we can use a chamfer of up to uh, 0.1 or you could even use something like 0 0.05. Okay. And now we're ready to do our cut sweep. So in order to do the cut sweep, let's pre-select. So control click in the design tree, your Acme thread profile and the helix spiral and then we'll use sweep cut. Okay, just make sure your Acme profile is the profile and then your helix is your path. Go ahead and click OK and you should have your thread. If we take a look at it, 
with section, they can see there the detail. Well done. Next, let's finish off with the holes on the back face and then also the back face feature here. Okay, so working in the right plane, let's go ahead and create another sketch. Let's get normal. And working in this area here, we'll use our sketch lines to create that notched surface here. So we're going to follow the profile and then use our smart dimensions. We're going to set a height here of 0.249. And then we have a width here of 0 0.450. And then from this point to this edge, we have 0 0.400. Now using our extrude cut, we'll go ahead and use mid-plane once again. And again here we can use a dynamic dimension or numeric as long as we penetrate the surface there. There's that feature. Next, if we take a look at the counter bores we're going to produce, we're going to work on this face, the back face here. First thing I want to do is select the face, create a sketch. Using a center line, we're going to create a vertical center line there. And then just start with some simple sketch circles. Let's position one first, set that for construction. And then we'll position it using smart dimensions from the center here to this edge on the back face here at a distance of 0 0.501. And then from the edge to the center at 0 0.450. Now we'll select the sketch circle and the center line here and we'll go ahead and mirror it. And this, this is what we'll use for reference when we do our hole wizard. Okay, now as we go to the hole wizard, we're going to be making a counter bore. So we're going to select the counter bore option. We're going to make sure it's for the socket head cap screw. We're going to use a size of number 10 with the normal fit. And our end condition is going to be up to surface. So to establish the position, let's switch tabs here. Let's select the back face and then go ahead and use the center there of our sketch circles to place our hole wizard holes and then click OK. Oh, we also have to select the face over here. If we go back to type, you'll notice here we have to define the up to surface for the end condition. So let's select this face here and now click OK. And there we go. This is our body with all our holes. Now you can go ahead and add your materials or your colors and then get ready for the technical drawing view.